Yeah, my wonderful people, my beautiful subscribers all over the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Well, uh, my wonderful people, today happens to be early Monday morning, you know, yeah. inside this uh, month of July. Everything, don't they go, nanya, nanya. You know, everything is working normal for them who believe and them who understand what is happening. Anyway, I don't want to take much of our time, oh, I still want to hammer on this uh, the issue of Mazen Namdekano and his continuous incarceration in DSS custody. And according to the news I have here, oh, the, the Igbos in the House of Reds, uh, uh, their, their, his, their plead or his plead or them plead uh, to the so-called President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is, is what is called an ironically masterclass and show of shame. Yes, you went there and you are pleading with somebody whom their case are still in court over the, the, the pronouncement of uh, the, what do they call it, the, the 2050 presidential election. And you people, the Igbos have already concluded and gathered that, uh, oh, he have won the whole thing. And when they at the house to play with him to release Mazen Namdekano, well, uh, at this point, I must make it to clear to each and every one of you out there. Whether you are a senator, you are a governor, you are a house of reps, so I be you are a speaker. Anywhere where you be, let me make it clear to each and every one of you. Mazen Nam the Kano is owing nobody. Mazen Nam the Kano have not committed any offense. The two court of competent jurisdictions, one the lower court of high court, have pronounced him free and fair. Let him go. The second highest court we have in the land, which is the appeal court, have already said. This man have not committed any offense. Allow him to go. So anyone now going to plead, release Mazen Nam the Kano conditionally. No, 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 no. My dear, I've seen all this thing as a waste of time. Mazen Nam the Kano should be freed without no any statement attached. Any statement attached to it. He have committed no single offense as long as the international community and law and rules and regulation of what happens on the June of 2021 is concerned. Mazen Nam Dekano is free. He's, a, he's a free agent. They are all holding him based on ethnicity. They are all holding him based on the hatred they have on the Igbos. Self-determination is what is never an offense in any court of law, in any country. Even the act of a United Nation, Commonwealth, ECOWAS, African Union, all these things, they have Nigeria is taking it to it, self determination. So we cannot come back again and begin to harm somebody simply because that person comes from one side of the country that you people have hated. Anyway, my wonderful people, I don't want to talk much on this uh, very morning. Let us go straight to the reason why we are here. And as you are watching, do not forget to subscribe, like, and also share. Igbo reps plead to Tunumbu and ironically masterclass and show of shame, according to IPOB. In a rather astonishing turn of events, Igbo representatives have been caught in a hilarious display of shamelessness as they plead with the rigged in president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Aswadi Balame Tunumbu, according to the news. To secure the release of Mazen Namdekano, this bizarre request came, comes uh, despite the fact that Kano has already been discharged and acquitted by the state's second highest court on the land. One cop, one cannot help but marvel at the sheer audacity of these Igbo representatives who seem to have forgotten the principles of justice and due process that they are meant to uphold. It is quite comical to witness their desperate attempt to seek assistance from a political figure who hails from a different region altogether, as if Tunumbu holds the keys to the nation's judiciary. He has nothing to do with that. Perhaps these representatives believe that Tunumbu possesses some sort of a mystical power or influence that can magically overturn a court ruling. Or maybe they simply lack a basic understanding of the concept of an independent judiciary and the separation of power within a democratic system. Whatever the case may be, their plea wrecks of desperation and a complete dis disregard for the rule of law. So nobody's supposed to be pleading for the release of Mazen Namdekano. When you are pleading, you are indirectly 
telling them that what the courts have said before is lie. What the courts have judged on the case of Martin Dam Zekano, that he had been discharged and acquitted, is also a lie. So now it has to be religious man, as the courts have already said so. This one is my own point of view. It is worth uh, noting that the Igbo representatives conveniently choose to ignore the fact that Kano has been already been uh, uh, has already been uh, acquitted, meaning that there is no legal basis for his continued detention. Instead of uh, championing the cause of justice and upholding the rights of their constituents, these politicians opt for a theatrical, a the, a, okay, theatrical uh, display of uh, sub subvariance and a misguided belief that external intervention is the solution to their problems, which is not. One cannot help but wonder why these Igbo representatives do not channel their efforts towards addressing the real issue plugging their constituents, rather than begging for the release of a man who has already been vindicated by the, by the, court, or by the court of competent jurisdictions. They have remained mute, like they have been. They said, focus on improving infrastructure, tackling corruption, and promoting economic development in their respective constituencies. But alas, it seems that the allure of political theatrics and the grandstanding is too enticing for those representatives to resist. They would rather engage in an empty gestures and seek validation from external figures than fulfill their duties as elected officials. Their actions serve as a sad reminder of the dire state of politics in this so-called country, Nigeria, where personal, uh, where personal interest and self uh, preservations take uh, precedence over genuine service to the people. In the end, this plea to the to Tulumbu for the release of Kano only highlights the ineptitude and lack of leadership among Igbo representatives. It exposes their willingness to abandon the principle of justice and the rule of law for the political expediency. It is a spectacle that should be met with ridicule and condemnation as it, as it further erodes public trust in our political officials. As we witness this uh, tragic comedy unfold, let us not forget the importance of holding our representatives accountable and demanding that they prioritize the well-being of their constituents over personal ambitions. It is high time for a realignment of values and a return to true leadership that is rooted in integrity, transparency, and a genuine commitment to the welfare of our people. Until then, we can only watch in amusement as these Igbo representatives continue their charade begging for assistance from a political figure who holds so sway over the legal proceedings that have already cleared Nam de Kano. The, shameless, the shamelessness on the display are truly a spectacle to behold, but let us not lose sight of the real issues at hand and the urgent need for responsible and principled leadership in our dear nation, according to the news I have here. This message is written by Obu, Obulus, Chidebere, for the Family Writers Press International. So, my good people, when I don't hear them now, so, make on I'll stop the, the beg begging. Speak with authority. Free this man, let him go, because the court have already said so. Because uh, the, during the time that to beg for Martin Nam, the kind of release have come and gone. When the elders, including uh, George Obioso, uh, of, of the blessed memory, went to the so-called uh, President Buhari to beg, what did he tell them? He tell them that let the court decide the fate of Martin Nam, the kind of, That same person, after the court had decided, have collided with the, with, with the uh, uh, Kabat in Asorok, collided with uh, Malami and the so-called uh, uh, Maman Daura, and the rest of them, Erufai and the rest of other uh, Fulani Kabars, and said, no, they have to do stay of execution. And the same court that said, free this man, let him go. He have not committed any offense. 
So the, the era of begging have come and gone. Now the era to remind the government that court is the last hope of a common man in other countries. But in Nigeria, the reverse is the case. Anyway, let us continue with the news we have here. In autumn vehicles, so at the end of the day, you know, we don't the, the scholarship where you give to Mesa Oma. I told my, my most of my friends when we were arguing about this, I said, he said, this girl is I said, 19 years old girl that is old enough to be a mother of five. You are telling me, it's, do you don't know this computer age we are, we are, we are, we are living now? A 10 or 15 year old, old uh, uh, this is self, a 10 or 15 year old child can do what she did. Manifestation of result is real. The app is also there. So this one, I don't know what she's starting to gain, but the true man that is going to pass it, pass through, or she's going to pass after all these things, I, I just pray that it will destroy the future of this 19-year-old girl. Oh, but we are talking about a, a, a girls who have already known every nooks and crannies of hospitals of where fake or original where they are where they are doing all this nonsense they are doing after them has have uh, spoiled the whole of their body nonsense so, so at last uh, innocent have said no more scholarship to the so-called mess of man innocent vehicles have withdrawn the scholarship the company awarded joy mess of man education following her acknowledgement of forging jump utme score the company said it made a difficult decision to withdraw the scholarship awarded to Mesoma, noting it was based on testament to his unyielding commitment to honesty, integrity, and merit-based recognition. This was contained in a statement issued on Saturday by the head of corporate communications and affairs of Innocent Group, Cornell Osiwe. The company disclosed it was involved in the process of investigating allegations surrounding the Mesoma's 2023 UT. ME results, examination results. Usiwe said, findings from the investigation have confirmed that Ms. Oma manipulated her UTME results. I mentioned that the conclusion was deeply disappointing and stands in direct contravention of the vehicles, okay, of the values innocent group holds, particularly as it relates to the, scho to the scholarship programs. The statement read, in recent days, we have been involved in a process of investigating allegations surrounding the 2023 UTME examination results of one of the of uh, our scholarship recipients, Miss Joy Mesoma Ejinkeme. It was reported initially that Miss Joy scored exceptionally high on the exam, a feat led to her, her being awarded a scholarship by our company. However, Subsequent reports of uh, discrepancies in her UTME score led us to seek clarification from the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAM, and to allow her to voice her stance. We engage in direct dialogue with Ms. Joy. Further to this, a committee set up by the Anambra State Governor, Dr. Charles Tukuma Soludo, carried out a thorough independent investigation into this matter. The findings from the rigorous investigation have now confirmed that Miss Joy Mesoma Edikeme did manipulate her UTME results. This conclusion is deeply disappointing and stands in direct contravention of the values we hold uh, there at innocent vehicles, particularly those that underscore our scholarship program. In line with these principles and response to the confirmed findings, we have made the difficult decision to withdraw the scholarship awarded to Ms. Joy Mesoma Ejikeme. This action is a testament to our unyielding commitment to honesty, integrity, and merit based recognition. We acknowledge that this development is regrettable and, is all, and it has a undoubtedly caused dismay among those who stood by Miss Joy, including her school principal and other well-meaning supporters. However, it is crucial uh, to maintain the integrity of our scholarship program and the values it represents. Innocent Vehicles remains steadfast in its mission to support deserving students' investment in the future of our education sector and uphold the highest ethical standards we have always been deeply committed to advancing educational excellence and upholding academic integrity through our scholarship program. 
believe in rewarding exceptional students who display not just academic uh, prowess, but also embody the values of honesty, transparency, and respect for the process that govern our educational system. We extend our appreciation to the public, JAM, the Anambra State Governors Committee, and all those who have shown understanding and support during this challenging situation. They remain committee to fostering educational excellence in so-called Nigeria. DSS didn't cut away files implicating Tunumbu ICPC. Are you the one working with the EFCC? You are not. So the EFCC have already come out to say that DSS invade their office and do what and cut away files, uh, uh, USBs containing the files of our so-called governors on the watch list of EFCC. Ohala, no, they finish. Using a, a agency against another agency. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, has refuted recent media reports suggesting that files implicating Bolame Tunumbu and the, his close allies were cutted away from its office by officials of the Department of the State Service, DSS. In a statement released on Sunday, the spokesperson of the Commission, Azoka Ogugua, urged the public to disregard these reports as false, baseless, and mere propaganda. Oga Wurudo Onibo must be at the helm of anything that has got to do with corruption. The ICPC emphasized that the wide media plays a crucial role in disseminating information. It is essential to adhere to the principle of responsible journalism. The anti corruption agency expressed concern over the non adherence to, to journalist, journal, journalistic ethics and called on the media not to allow their platform to be exploited. For spreading subversive uh, sub uh, and uh, misleading reports. The commission firmly refused the report by Sahara reporters and unequivocally said that there were no files implicating President Tunumbu or his close ads at our headquarters or any of our of offices across the state. Therefore, the alleged catching away of these imaginary files is entirely baseless and should be disregarded by the public, the statement reads. The Commission urged the public to rely on credible and verified information from official sources and assure them of its continued efforts to combat corruption in Nigeria, according to the news we have here. Faneka Yode, under another fire for accusing Governor Oti of refusing to recognize Tunumbu as the president. This man keep on causing confusion here in here and there. But nobody is questioning him. He did the first one against Atiku. After they say grinding, grinding, they free him and let him go. Hmm. Ferdinand, the former spokesperson of the governor of Abia State, has slammed the former Nigerian Minister of Aviation, Femi Fanika Yode, over his recent outburst against Governor Alex Uti. On Wednesday, Kayode took his wife at the state governor and accused him of refusing to hang the official portrait of the new Nigerian president, Bola Tunumbu, in his office because he does not recognize the ex Lagos governor as his president. However, Mr. Ekoma, while reacting in a statement issued in Omaha, the state capital, described Faneka Yode's claim as uh, malicious and unfunded, as the government is not surprised at the cheap uh, pettiness and lack of decorum displayed by the former minister. According to him, Unlike Faneka Yode, who had manifested his own trademark of pettiness and lack of decorum when he roundly and reportedly abused and blackmailed President Tunumbu in the past, Governor Alex Uti, in line with his upbringing, orientation, character, and exposure, does not act irrationally and thus could not have, have under any circumstances, refused to recognize President Tunumbu as the President of Nigeria, especially when he and the president enjoy a long-standing relationship that transcends politics. Oti has had President Tunumbu's picture featured prominently on the first page of his inauguration uh, brochure and also ensured that dozens of the president's portraits were produced and distributed to different government offices. Ekoma maintained that the ex-minister post strategy of trying to use the governor's name to secure an appointment in Tunumbu's government is dead on arrival 
as the president knocks Mr. Femi Fadekayode as an unstable character. Worse, the president knows that Faneka Yode is an unstable character who is notorious for spraying venom and vituperations against the innocent for the purpose of economic survival. The fact that Faneka Yode, a former minister, has reduced himself to a level of going to social media to copy fake news and use it as a, use it and use a sitting governor shows how damaged and disoriented he has become. Hence, they need to say a word of prayer on his bed. The special advisor of media and publicity secretary of Abia, Governor therefore, enjoined the general public to disregard the malicious allegation and see it as idle gossip from a mischief maker who, according to him, desires to sow a seed of discord and disaffection for selfish political gains. That is what he keeps doing every now and then. Another Nigerian businessman who is uh, where he named the Bitcoin, Bitcoin chief, a uh, Bitcoin chief, is uh, and uh, and uh, still stand on his words. He said, Nigerian businessman reaffirms commitment to sponsor Mess Omar to, to U.S. University despite jump fraud. Nigerian businessman and crypto investor Gaius Chibweze, popularly known as the Bitcoin chief, has retreated his commitment to sponsor the Anambra State student Mesoma Ejikeme, indicted of forging her university, okay, yeah, university tertiary matriculation examination UTME results. I just news report that Chi Beze made this known in a post via his Twitter page, stating that his offer of a scholarship to an American, UK, or Canadian university still stands. According to him, the supposed illegality of Mesoma was not treated like the case of the Independent National Electoral Commission and ex wherein in President Bolame Tunumbu who didn't win the election, according to Bitcoin Chief. The Bitcoin Chief further stated that he would educate Mesoma on her wrongs and also assured that assured her that one UME says score does not define their future or how one will turn out in life. The Nigerian billionaire I added that uh, there were many bad examples in the country that the teenager copied from. And those people need to be dealt with first before you can deal with Mesoma. In his words, I will still sponsor Mesoma whether she agree or not. That is not my problem. Suppose illegality was not celebrated openly, like INEC, swearing in a president who didn't win election, a president with a false certificate and no trace of primary to university education. If Nigeria didn't celebrate elected officials who did the elections, it is seen. Young people won't see a reason to force certificates and celebrate it openly. While we address this, we must look at the entire society and the entire process that brought in this uh, administration. If you want us to accept, celebrate and defend the president who did the election with false certificate, we must also not destroy little girls' future with a false certificate. 100% right. I will personally call her and explain to her that jam numbers don't define how far she can go in life and next time she shouldn't bother fortune one. The only thing that can stop Ms. Oma is God. As long as I live, she will school in either America, UK or Canada. Nothing less. You can enjoy or you can keep crying, but I will sponsor her. I believe a second chance, according to Bitcoin chief. Nigerian Senator Bemrus have pre ordered a two hundred and thirty one million dollar flying car, a left car, and also shared the receipt in social media. That is approximately three hundred thousand US dollars. The Nigerian Senator Ben Mure Bruce on Friday disclosed that they pre ordered he okay, he pre ordered a flying car from California based uh startup Alef Aeronautics which is reportedly worth over 300,000 U.S. dollars. The former Bayelsa East Senator tweeted, tweeted this with a photo of the black car and a receipt showing the pre-order notice. Murray Bruce, an advocate of electric cars, said he was trained to announce his pre-order, adding that flying cars are no longer skiffy. I am trained to announce my pre-order of Aleph at Aleph Aeron Aeronautics, 
the first FAA approved flying car, uh, flying electric car. A testament to our bondless future. Flying cars aren't just for ski fee anymore. For years, I've been an advocate for electric vehicles and I was the first to own one in Nigeria, he said. Murray Bruce said he would be bringing it to Nigeria and hope the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority would gladly receive it. Here is the next leap in Transportation Africa. We rise excited to bring this revolution to Nigeria and I hope the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority at Nigeria CAA is really ready for it. The photo and the receipt is out there. You can as well log on to www.nigernews.com. You will see everything you need to know about this car. Another Nigerian embarks on 200 our singing marathon to break world record. <laughs> world record, Guinness world record. And I go hear them very soon. Make sure I just calm down. We are coming. A Nigerian man, Uluwa Tobi uh, Kufije, has embarked on the longest singing marathon in a bold quest to set a new Guinness world record. The marathon kicked off in Lagos on July 5 and is expected to run until July 13. Uh, Kufeje, whose marathon kick off on July 5 and expected run until July 13, announced that his plan to undertake a 200 hour praise, praise anthem was aimed to surpass the previous record of 105 hours set by Indian singer Suni Wagma in 2012, very long ago. The rest are sure that if you break this record, they won't even allow this record to reach your hand. Another person will come out now and say they will sing 300 hours. That is Nigeria for you. Since 2012, or more than a decade, this guy has been holding this record. No one sees it, not even a Nigerian, either Yoruba, Igbo, or Hausa, or Efik, or Fulani, or whatever it is. But the rest are sure that if a Nigerian man breaks this record now, another Nigerian man will come down to dump their image. That is Nigeria for you. Backstabbers everywhere. Guinness World Records has accepted my application to break the record of the longest single marathon of 105 hours currently held by the Sunil Wagmaya Indian since March 2012 and a record of the longest concert by a solo artist for 501 hours currently held by Kuzimena Kuzime Mananan Ramesham and also India. India the trial. These marathons will be done separately. I'm very uh, convinced that I will break the two records. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He posted. Okay, oh, you are doing well. So far, Kufeji has surpassed 106 hours. Wow. You are doing well. You are doing well, my brother. You are doing well. Go ahead. The sky will be your limit. But be rest assured that they will come back. And a Nigerian man also, or a woman, will come and now and tell you that they will break the record more than you do. That is Nigeria for you. A Nigerian pilgrim, Aisha returns, lost 56 million naira to owner in Saudi Arabia. I don't really understand this headline when I saw it, but I need to read it to my people. Let me know exactly how and what happened or what regard at the pilgrim. A Nigerian pilgrim, Aisha to Yan Guru Nahus. I reportedly returned the sum of eighty thousand dollars she found to the to, to found to the owner in Saudi Arabia. Okay, 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 okay. The said money, when converted to Nigeria currency, is approximately fifty-six million naira. Nigerians understand. Independent Haji reporters of Nigeria confirmed the citizens' commendable act on its. Facebook page on Saturday. Aisha to a short form of Aisha, held from a Bongudu local government area of Zamfara State. The Haji platform reported. Nigerians understand that no fewer than 95,000 Nigerians Muslim precisely travel to the Holy Land for pilgrimage this year. This Nigerian pilgrimage and Hajiya. Aisha to Yaan Guru Nahus from Banguru local government area of Zafra State found $80,000, approximately 56 million naira, and handed it over to the Zamfara Pilgrimage Welfare Agency official for onward return to the owner. 
May Almighty Allah reward her honesty and accept her haji. Amen. The post by Independent Haji Reporters reads. Some Nigerians on social media have reacted.